echidnas rule the spine. It's not a Chinese medical idea, but it's pretty true. Especially rule the lumbar spine. When you look at the, the embryological development of the kidney, you see that the kidney starts out as the pronephros. And then it forms the mesonephros, and then it forms the metanephros, and then it forms the kidney. Studying embryology is one of the most fascinating ways to understand organ interrelationships, and it also explains a lot of Chinese medicine's weirdness and, and idiosyncrasies. Um, <clears throat> revealing, once again, how brilliant Chinese medicine is. Yeah. So the, the, the first form of the kidney, the pronephros, if you look at where in the, in the developing embryo that is forming in relation to the spine, it's forming at around the level of the neck. So your first kidney is up here at the level of your neck, more or less, right? Because it's actually forming as a little string, bilateral string of, of, of structures, kind of at about that level. So, you know, one thing that's been noticed um, by Chinese medical practitioners is that when you look at the thyroid, you're really looking at the kidney. Right? That when we look at every single description of low thyroid functioning, hypothyroidism, it's the same as what for thousands of years Chinese medical practitioners have been calling kidney yang deficiency. It's the same. Cold hands, cold feet, depression, slow bowel transit time, um, you know, coarse, thick, kind of weird, um, dry kind of hair because it's not nourished anymore. Um, did I mention low libido, back pain? Um, you know, you just line up all the symptoms of, of hypothyroidism, and it looks a lot like a kidney yang deficiency in the human body. Similarly, when the, the thyroid is excess, um, you get hyperthyroidism. It looks like a, a lot like kidney yin deficiency. Right? The body temperature goes up a little bit. There's a kind of a speeding up of the heart rate, a nervousness, agitation, a slight tremor to the, to the, to the limbs when you hold them out, um, speeded up transit time, flushed face, etc. Right? So we know that the first embryological kidney forms at the level of the neck. At the same time, we're getting the thyroid developing, which is a little bit like your kidney's control tower or your kidney's sort of central processing system for the kidney intelligence, actually. Right? And it's not a surprise that it's at the level of the throat. Um, remember, the kidney, is, the kidney rules your reproductive system from a Chinese point of view. And when we're talking about kidney, of course, we're talking about the kidney system. It's ruling reproduction. And therefore, it's intimately connected to your creativity, your fundamental production of regenerative energy inside of you. And in, in, the in Vedic thinking around chakra theory, the, the second seat of the sexual energy, where the sexual energy reunites, is at the level of the throat in, in Vedic understanding. You know, your sexual energy differentiates into yin and yang, or masculine and feminine, uh, and, and remains in this kind of spiraling formation, dividing, reconnecting, dividing, reconnecting, but it really reunites at the level of your, your creative self-expression and your voice uh, and the level of the fifth chakra and the throat. So, after the kidney has formed the pronephros, it then forms the mesonephros in the embryo. And the mesonephros runs down either side of the spine, and guess what it looks like? It looks like the back shoe point system. It looks like how the bladder controls the transformations of chi for all of your organs. Right? It looks like that whole system. Then the kidneys form the metanephros, and they actually drop down. The metanephros drops down to the testes and the ovaries, which is really interesting to me because the <coughs> character for kidney in Chinese actually means testicle. The character we now use in modern Chinese, well, not modern, modern Chinese, but pre-1949 you know, Chinese, uh, it actually is the same character as the character testicle, so that, like, showing that clear interrelationship. And then as the spine you know, grows relative to the, um, the positioning of the metanephros in the embryo and uh, as the testes drop down and so on, then you get the kidneys landing in their sort of adult position where they are now. But clearly the 
if we think of those previous embryological stages of the kidney, you can see how the kidney rules the, the whole spine, and of course rules the um, pituitary, thyroid, adrenal, gonadal axis, right? your basic hormonal axis of your body. Let's go back to evolutionary stages. So, the evolutionary stage of reptilian consciousness, crustacean consciousness, fish consciousness, is expressed in the lumbar spine. This is why in, in early Chinese um, thinking about the, the spine, the turtle was always taken as a symbol of the kidney chi, <clears throat> and the sacrum was always seen as <clears throat> a, a symbol of the turtle energy, right? because it looks a lot like the turtle. Right? And so we see this kind of overlap between the ancient understanding of the kidneys as, and also the fish were taken as a symbol of the kidney, and of course the kidney rules uh, water and the kidney rules fear. Um, as you move up the evolutionary ladder, we've gone from unicellular consciousness when you're in a state of bliss to insectoid consciousness when you're, where you're sort of operating at the level of the yes-no polarity of the autonomic nervous system. And then you move into reptilian consciousness where you have identification as the body and you have the generation of the first emotion that we consider an emotion, which is fear. Right? And, <clears throat> and of course, if you develop fear, then innate to the development of fear is the development of territorial anger. Right? Because all territorial anger is, is you know, fear turned outward. Right? It's, remember, it's fight or flight. So the flight aspect is the first expression of fear. Actually, excuse me, the first expression of fear is freezing. It's, it's freezing, total freezing. And this is interesting to, to study because one of the understandings of Chinese medicine is that the kidney is a cold energy. And cold goes towards congealing and staying still and hiding. Right? And that very first energy of fear is freezing. If you can get fear up to its next level, it's, it's flight, it's fleeing, it's running the heck away. And that's a higher level <laughs> in terms of the ordering and functioning of, of the system. The next level, you get fear up a, a, a notch above that, we come to the next sort of emotion, which is, which is territorial anger. In a sense, all anger is territorial, right? For a, for a fish or a reptile, it's just the territory of the body, although it could be the territory you live in, too. For example, the Bushmaster snake, I think it's from Indonesia, will chase you at about 20 miles an hour out of its territory and its bite is completely deadly. So if you're wandering along and you suddenly see a Bushmaster snake bombing across the ground towards you, run like <coughs> hell <coughs> up a tree. <laughs> or just run until you get out of its territory. But mostly, reptilian consciousness is about my body and defending my body. It looks like anger. If you go back to the Precambrian and the Permian area, where you were floating around in this giant ocean of nutrients and you're just this little unicellular consciousness, well, <clears throat> at some point you crawl out of the water and you become a dinosaur. That probably took a bit of time. But our sort of common understanding of the dinosaur looks a lot like this whole reptilian consciousness. Not very friendly to your babies, necessarily. You know, reptiles and will eat their babies. There's not a lot of maternal love going on. And that simply means that <coughs> the self is identified as the body, but it has not yet identified as the other. Although you do see the <coughs> beginnings of that with fish consciousness, to some extent. <coughs> so then you get this, this whole evolutionary shift. You jump up another level. And that jump up is towards, towards uh, the mammalian consciousness. And mammalian consciousness involves unicellular consciousness and bliss. It involves the kind of insectoid consciousness of that very sort of simple yes-no functioning of the nervous system and a state of irritation, separation from something. It's a fundamental layer in people, that irritation or separation. And then it involves moving up towards, say, reptilian consciousness, where you're actually experiencing fear and then territorial anger and the three stages of fear, freezing, 
um, fright and flight. Um, and uh, then at the level of mammalian consciousness, you get this shift where now the self identifies not just as the body, but also as the other. And so you get the maternal instinct. The mother animal is now identified you know, with the child. And you get the herd instinct or the pack instinct much more distinctly in place. Fish may school together, but they don't really defend each other. Right? Do you see the distinction? Fish lay eggs, they don't necessarily that much take care of their babies, generally. Whereas when you get to the mammalian level of consciousness, um, then you get this, this, this other level of development, which is now, the, now you're identified as the self and you're identified as the other. You're now taking care of your pack or your herd, potentially, and especially you're taking care of your child, right? This is, a, this is a, a, a shift in the identification of consciousness. It's now identified as self, as the body, and all, the, all those lower layers, and also self as other, right? As the, as the pack and the group and the child and so on. In the human system, I'm going to suggest this basically is reflected in the thoracic spine. Um, but it gets more complex because humans... Or our mammals. It's not like we sort of, just because we've developed a brain that absorbs 25% of our metabolic resources, we somehow sort of like are no longer mammals. <laughs> We're still mammals. So that shift of human consciousness, where, the, where you can be, become conscious of the whole system, unicellular consciousness all the way through to you know, mammalian consciousness, human consciousness, angelic consciousness, archangelic consciousness, universal consciousness, that all occurs from right within mammalian consciousness. Hence the importance of this area in the middle of the thoracic spine, which I'll talk about a little bit about more as we get into that. Mm -hmm.